my dear elect, when I call your name, would you please stand and remain standing? Kaylee, Karen, Nancy, Joshua, Morgan, Bud. What a blessing it is for us to have you present in our midst. So please listen once again to these words of St. Paul from our second reading to the Christians at the church in Ephesus. You once were darkness, but now you are light in the world. Live as children of the light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. This is what we pray for you at this your second scrutiny and exorcism. In less than three weeks, at the Easter vigil, you will be transformed through the sacrament of baptism from darkness to light. You will become children of the light. Would you please be seated? Up until now, you have been shackled by original sin. The Catholic Church teaches that original sin is the loss of original holiness and justice due to Adam and Eve's sin, our first parents. As a result, all of humanity is alienated from God and also from one another. We have a wounded human nature inclined towards evil. We call this concupiscence. Human, human history shows the presence and meaning of this reality. Its denial, that is the denial of sin, only leads to more serious error in education, politics, social life, and morals of which we are experiencing ever more intensely in our present moment. All of you who are baptized, would you please stand and remain standing? Thank you. So please listen once again to these words from St. Paul. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for light produces every kind of goodness righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. My sisters and brothers, we are light in the Lord, for we have been baptized. We are called to live as beloved daughters and sons who shine with the light of Jesus Christ, who redeemed us from the darkness of sin so that our lives might produce every kind of goodness righteousness, and true. This is a monumental task. This is something we cannot do on our own. This is something that we can only achieve through the grace given to us through our baptism and the sacraments of the Catholic Church. Jesus gave us the Church because we cannot do this alone. This can only happen in community where we find support education and formation in the truth of sacred scripture and sacred tradition. Please be seated. You and I are called to be light to these elect. You and I, by word, deed, and our presence here at Mass, are challenged to be for them examples of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. As the early church father Tertullian wrote, Christians are made, not born. As I said last week, faith is more often caught than taught. So we need to ask ourselves, are we so on fire with the gospel of Jesus Christ that the elect and others who come close to us 
feel its warmth and even catch on fire themselves? Are we so bright with the light of Christ that those in the darkness of unbelief might come to truly see? Are we so humble that others can experience God's love in us so as to realize their true identity as beloved daughters and sons of God? Do we place God first so that everyone and everything else is properly aligned to God and God's plans? My dear sisters and brothers, we the baptized, when these elect look at us, what do they see? The Lord God said to Samuel, not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. When the Lord looks into our hearts on our Lenten journey, what does the Lord see? Can we be humble, courageous, and honest enough to answer this question? Can we trust enough in God's mercy and love for us to name the blindness that sin causes in our lives? This is what the elect in this second scrutiny mirror for us. They challenge us not to be like the Pharisees of the gospel who said, surely we are not blind, are we? To which Jesus replied, if you were blind, you would have no sin, but now you are saying, we see, and your sin remains. Will we allow Jesus Christ to smear our eyes with mud made with his saliva? Will we be obedient to Jesus Christ and go wash in the pool of Siloam, that is, to confess our sins in the sacrament of reconciliation? Before we profess our creed at Mass, which the elect received this past Wednesday at noon Mass, we will send them forth to reflect upon today's scripture readings. So I urge the rest of us to take time to pray, read, and discuss today's gospel. Let us allow ourselves to enter into the story and to experience in some way the transformation of the man born blind from physical blindness to sight from blindness of our self-righteous faith to a true profession of his faith. Let us bow down and worship Jesus. As our world becomes darker and blinder in its striving for ever new human enlightenment based in self-definition with little or no reference to God, we must become truly woke, as St. Paul writes. Awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Only in Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, can we be truly awake and alive.